Hello friends, I am Dr. Rajesh Chokhani, a general pediatrician from Bandra, Mumbai and today we will be talking about skin rash needs a cautious approach. So friends, when a patient presents with a rash, we sometimes make a spot diagnosis. However, actually, even in these cases, it may not be just the morphology of the rash which has given us the diagnosis, but we may have subconsciously analyzed many other aspects of the rash like its site, its onset duration, progress, etc. And then we may have made an educated guess. So, let us see what all we need to look at when confronted with a rash so that it helps us even in scenarios when there is no spot diagnosis. As usual, the history gives us a lot of clues. Take examples, onset, a sudden onset of a rash within minutes suggests an allergic rash like as in a tick area, duration, a short duration rash following a short duration fever suggests a viral illness, progress or evolution, a typical vesicle like a drop of water on the skin which progresses to become a pustule and then goes on to crust is typical of varicella, associated symptoms so short duration fever suggesting a viral or bacterial infection and a long duration fever suggesting a systemic inflammatory disease. Similar illness in the family suggesting a viral exanthem or diseases which have a hereditary component and so on. So accompanying and relieving, aggravating and relieving factors, presence of pets in the house, use of drugs, history of systemic diseases, use of new cosmetics and so on and so forth. When we try to make a clinical diagnosis, obviously we focus on what the rash looks or feels like. We all know that a macule is an alteration in skin color which is flat or not raised. A papule is a raised palpable solid lesion less than 1 cm. A vesicle is a raised uh, lesion with, uh, what, with fluid filled raised lesion uh, which is less than 1 cm. And when it is larger than 1 cm we call it a bullous lesion. A petechial spot is a 2 to 3 mm dark red or brown non-blanching spot on the skin and so on and so forth. But as we already said, the morphology may or may not help us. So while a solitary or grouped vesicular lesions on an erythematous base are classical of chickenpox and herpes respectively, but on the other hand, maculopapular rashes are very common and seen in a wide variety of conditions. There are so many short duration fevers which are viral illnesses which end with such a rash. In fact, some of them are wrongly diagnosed as measles and we realize that measles should be diagnosed only in the presence of a bad cough. So in other words, just the maculopapular rash does not give us a specific diagnosis many times and we need to look at other things like the distribution of the rash, the sequence of its appearance or disappearance, Phenomena following a rash like desquamation, the temporal relationship of the rash with other symptoms like fever and so on and so forth. Let's look at the distribution for example. Facial erythema like a lion-like faces and a palmar erythema is very common in dengue fever in the early stages. A centrifugal rash that means beginning on the trunk and then spreading to the extremities is typical of drug rash and main, most viral infections except Eco and Coxsackie. In young children, Coxsackie virus infection like the hand, foot and mouth disease has its typical distribution as the name suggests and in addition in the buttock area. In meningococcemia and rickettsial fevers, the rash may start at the periphery and then spread to the center which is called a centripetal distribution. Streaky involvement on the face may suggest a parovirus B19 infection also called fifth disease or erythema infectiosum. Other typical examples of distribution include flexural areas involved in atopic dermatitis, the butterfly rash in the malar area of the face in SLE, the extensor involvement in psoriasis or the exposed areas of the body in papular urtic area following insect bites and so on. So friends, what should be our clinical approach to rashes because the differential diagnosis of rashes is very huge. We should look at four big categories. 
so the first one and most important is we should not miss life threatening conditions second we focus on bacterial infections that need an antibiotic third we look at conditions which need to be followed up because there are possible complications in the near future and fourth are conditions which evolve over time there is no specific diagnosis at this point so let's look at them one by one in general for puric skin rashes hemorrhagic vesicular skin rashes bullous rashes and gangrenous rashes could be life threatening and we need to evaluate them very carefully particularly if they are associated with fever and or the patient looks sick so for example just a petechial spot may suggest itp which is a relatively benign illness but in the presence of fever and purpura it could suggest a dangerous illness like meningococcemia or sepsis or leukemia similarly just a vesicular rash in chickenpox is harmless but when it becomes hemorrhagic it could be dangerous steven johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis are phenomena or reactions which happen after drug ingestion commonly they are actually a continuum of the same process the toxic epidermal necrolysis being the more severe version they start with erythematous macules which rapidly necrose at the center to form vesicles followed by bulle followed by complete denudation of the skin and the important thing is this involves the whole body as well as the mucous membranes so such rashes when they involve the whole body or the mucous membranes these are two additional features of such rashes which alert us to their dangerous nature coming to bacterial infections that need an antibiotic so when fever is accompanied with generalized erythema it may suggest a toxic shock syndrome either streptococcal or staphylococcal when there is a blotchy erythema with a sandpaper like appearance it may suggest scarlet fever in rickett shell fever again we may have a uh, petechial spots coming up to begin with or some rash on the palms with fever so here an important principle is that when a rash appears in the crescendo phase of the fever and the patient is still looking unwell or sick this is a clue to us that we should look for a serious illness or maybe even a bacterial infection that needs treatment the next group that we look at is conditions which have implications for the future classic example being kawasaki disease we may diagnose kawasaki disease based on many other features but the rash in kawasaki disease can be varied so it can be maculopapular erythema multiform like or scarlet uniform we often look for desquamation but we must remember that perineal desquamation is common in the acute phase of the illness while periungual desquamation is seen on fingers and toes 2 to 3 weeks after the illness as against this generalized body exfoliation is seen in the convalescent phase of scarlet fever or the toxic shock syndromes next we look at diseases where the diagnosis is not obvious right now and therefore these diseases need follow up a evanescent rash which is seen at the peak of a fever and then subsides as soon as the fever resolves suggests a vasculitic process which may be seen in inflammatory diseases similarly palpable purpura suggests vasculitis so in any prolonged fever if there is any kind of a rash we must be alerted to the possibility of a systemic inflammatory disorder in fact even in prolonged urtic area if it is associated with a fever which has no other localization these children need careful follow up because some of them may turn out to be a malignancy so friends this is the clinical approach where we divide them into these four categories when it comes to investigations it obviously depends on our clinical diagnosis and probabilities at times we need a skin biopsy to get a histopathological diagnosis examples being iga vasculitis or any other vasculitis or histiocytosis so to sum up we must look at many other things besides the morphology when confronted with a rash and we must be cautious that we do not miss 
लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग कंडीशन कंडीशन दैट नीड इमीजिएट अटेंशन लाइक बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन दैट नीड्स एंटीबायोटिक्स कंडीशन दैट नीड फॉलो अप either because their diagnosis is going to evolve over a period of time or because there are future complications expected thank you the next video will be by dr anjali gokarn on hearing impairment can occur at any age thank you